What up, it's Bnet from We Make Best here with a new series going over the top decks for this Dynasty ProQuest season. In this series, we're gonna cover our top six decks for ProQuest and how to play with and against them. And today we're gonna cover Icelander. Right. Icelander's goal is to keep the life totals even using Waning Moon and efficient spells and attacks. Stormstriders allows Icelander to threaten damage on her own turn and then play a red spell as an instant to finish the opponent along with her Arsenal card and Waning Moon. Icelander is a deck focused around having the most efficient turn cycles in the game, usually playing off powerful two card hands such as in Lightning Strike, Fiendel's Fighting Spirit and Wounded Bull. The deck plays these attack action cards to strip cards from the opponent's hands to set up arcane damage with Waning Moon and make it harder for the opponent to fight through her disruption if they choose to block. Iceland is one of the best decks in the format due to her flexibility, being able to focus on disruption or race with arcane damage and attack actions. Playing against Iceland is difficult as you need to play around a Frostbite on every turn of the game, even though they could just have a burn spell or a red card in their arsenal. Icelander doesn't have too many weaknesses, although she is weak to big attacks that require no setup. We call this going Guardian, as it's reminiscent of old him and Bravo just slamming down big attacks. Even aggro decks can do this by pitching blues to attack with a single large attack while having resources floating for Arcane Barrier. The Little is also one of the best cards against Icelander as it presents an attack and generates resources to fight through her disruption and pay for Arcane Barrier. Icelander is generally favored against the aggressive decks due to her disruption from cards like Channel Lake Frigid, Hypothermia, and Blizzard, which can shut down opponents' turns on the spot. But even against slower decks, Icelander is still a great choice as she can play for a late game setup with cards like Frost Hex, Ice Eternal, Amulet of Ice or Insidious Chill, and Energy Potion. If you're expecting a lot of Icelanders at your LGS, we'd recommend looking into Reinar or Dromite. But overall, this leaves Icelander in a very good spot against the winner's metagame, making her one of the best choices to bring into this ProQuest season. Now let's get into Icelanders matchups against the field. First up, we got Icelander versus Fi. This matchup is a straight up race. Fi's consistent pressure makes it impossible for Icelander to play a slow game without leaking constant damage. This means Icelander is the one who is forced to get maximum value out of her disruptive cards in order to shut down the wide turns of Fi and allow her to match the Fi's damage output with her efficient attack actions. Secondly, we got Icelander versus Old Him. In this matchup, Old Him is pressured to kill the Icelander due to the threat of the Frost Hex Ice Eternal combo. The reason this combo is so devastating is because of the discard effects that strip Old Him's hand, which doesn't allow him to arcane barrier the combo. Icelander should be looking to set up all her items while blocking efficiently. The main way Old Him can disrupt their plan is with Pummel to force discard or Ice Rack to deny Icelander's arsenal. Next we got Icelander vs Briar. This matchup is Icelander favoured because of your disruptive cards like Channel Lake Frigid, Hypothermia and Blizzard, being able to completely destroy Briar's main game plan of going wide with multiple 0 for 4 attacks in a single turn. Icelander is also able to respond to Briar's embodiment of Earth Trigger, allowing Icelander to at minimum give the Briar a taxing effect before the turn even starts. Also due to Briar having to take half a turn off to play her Channel Mount Heroic, you can easily set up a punishing disruptive effect to completely negate their most powerful turn. Briar also being a deck that does not block well means the attack actions in Icelander's deck have heavy impact when played. Next up we got Icelander versus Dash. Because of Icelander's ability to disrupt while also heavily pressuring life totals, Dash is forced to go into their boost plan since the Exodia setup will take too long and can be punished by cards such as Frost Hex and Ice Eternal. This puts Icelander into a favorable position as now all her disruptive spells can shut down the Dash's turn almost entirely. Hypothermia is especially potent in this matchup as this affects all the boost cards in Dash's deck, completely shutting down their turn on the spot and they only get one crack of their boots to deny it. If the Dash is able to play out multiple attacks in a turn, be wary of blocking the early raw damage as you can then be punished if the dash player plays a pulse wave harpoon to take one of your attack actions. Icelander vs Bravo. This is one of the harder matchups for Icelander, even though the Icelander player is able to respond to the seismic surge triggers. The effect from the seismic surge token essentially negates the taxing effect from a frostbite, making it extremely hard to disrupt the Bravo's game plan without your major disruptive cards. With that being said, Channel Lake Frigid is surprisingly good against Bravo to shut down their normally efficient turns when they activate multiple effects. Along with the Channel Lake Frigids, Icelander should look to get an Insidious Chill out as soon as possible to allow her to strip the Bravo's hand and heavily impact their offensive power. One thing for the Icelander to note is that Icelander being one of the most efficient decks in the format means that simple disruption actually affects her turn significantly. This means the Icelander player must always take into account for the possibility of Pummel on an attack action from the Bravo's side. If the Icelander is able to slow the game down enough with her setup and disruption, they can easily set up their Frost Hex Ice Eternal plan and then take the W from there. So as per our community poll, we got one game for you with a full commentary, so we thought it would be best to go over one of the trickier matchups with Old Him. 
All right, real quick before we start this match, this was early on in the testing process where we didn't have crown provenance in the deck list, but playtesting the Guardian matchups made us realize how important it is to cycle your arsenal against CNC and Pummel, and that Coronet pick rarely gets activated, but it's a good game showing the power of Icelander's setup cards. Okay, so the game starts off with Tog playing at Endless Winter. If it was Fused, we'd be able to block with two cards and then play the Sink Below to eat the Frostbite before our turn starts, but without Fusing, we have the choice of keeping Insidious Chill or Frost Hex. I choose to keep the Chill because it's stronger on its own than the Frost Hex. We then open a hand with Amulet of Ice into our Insidious Chill, a perfect start to a Guardian matchup, and then we Arsenal our Frost Hex. Tog's turn, he ends up attacking with a Choke Slam with two floating. This is a clear indicator of Pummel, and it's important for us to give a Frostbite before moving to the reaction step. We do this while also developing the Frost Hex. Our next turn is Amulet of Ice, Arseneling a Sink Below. Note, this is the exact same situation where we can be punished by CNC Pummel. Tog ends up playing an Endless Winter, unfortunately not fused again, with two resources floating. My plan here is to play the Sink Below and filter the E Strike to try and find a card that we can use in the next turn after we strip his hand with our fused Aether Ice Vein. Note if there is a Pummel this turn, we won't be able to get this full value, but we can still use the Ice Vein and Arsenal to channel Lake Frigid. We fuse on our own turn into an Oasis Respite to cleanly stop the Ice Vein itself. Tog has one floating, so I use Waning Mood to see if he wants to AB. If he does prevent the one, he needs to pitch two blues to pay for the two amulets, and then he has no hand, perfectly setting up our Ice Eternal. What I didn't realize is Endless Winter's effect on our amulets only let us crack one. We end up drawing a red attack heavy hand, so our plan of Ice Eternal will have to wait. Tog pushes E Strike with plus two to keep pressure on our life total, although in hindsight we both concluded that he should have drawn a card for his Crown of Seeds. On our next turn we lead with Scar because we have Tunic to pay for the Frostbite from Stalagmite. If you know Old Him doesn't play Sledge, you can cut Scar because it's weak against Stalagmite. Tog then follows up with an Ice Hammer with what looks like a Pummel. I block for 3 to absorb some damage, seeming as though my turn still works through a Frostbite, and we play the Scar for a Scar and pitch to Coronet P. Tog then plays another E Strike this time, drawing a card for Crown. I block Emeritus looking to set up a big Ice Eternal on our own turn. The result of the Ice Eternal has Tog with 2 floating resources, so I don't crack the amulet and we can leave it for a later turn. Tog pays through the Frostbites for an Ice Hammer. I have two options. I can either use all my resources for Brothers in Arms and Waning Moon whilst playing the Frosting, or I can block with Brothers paying with the Wounded Ball and play the Chill on my own turn. I decide to play a bit more aggressively as I don't see the game going too much longer. The only problem is we are left without an Arsenal. Tog has another Endless Winter, still not fused. This is screaming out Pummel, so I block with one of the Ice Veins, prepared to discard the other to the Pummel. No Pummel comes through, so I go to pitch the Yellow and use the Tunic to play the Ball, forgetting that Endless Winter's effect is active. Tog attacks with an Array Space and I choose to cover it with my Equipment and Frost Hex. I consider using Stormies to prevent the Pummel that is telegraphed when he activates his Tunic, but I realize I can't do this because he can just react with the Pummel seeming as though we're in the reaction step. My next turn I can't Ice Fuse due to the Array Space, so I just send the Ice Bane for some raw Arcane damage and ask for my Ice Eternal looking for a final Fuse to be able to finish the game. We get attacked by a Red Glacial which demands some blocks, but we are happy to play another turn cycle seeming as though we have another attack act. Another Array Space comes through and I block for 4 so that I don't die to a Pummel. After he casts the Pummel, we have Lethal against two resources, with Ice Eternal for X equals 3, Waning Moon, and Frost Hex for a total of 9 damage. GG's. Like always, we'll leave our recommended deck list in the description. We're also going to put our sideboard guide up for Icelander and every other hero we're going through in this series on our Patreon. So if you're interested in that, go check that out, but for now, we outies. You need to put the clicks in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you reckon they're in?